Take a look around the table on the screen. What do you see? These are different objects on the table. So objects are basically anything that you can give a noun to. For example, right now there is a notebook, pen, glass of water and lamp on the table. Because we can give a name to each of these, each one is an object. And of course, the table is also an object. Objects in the real world have certain unique properties and functions they perform. And these objects interact with each other. For example, a notebook that is rectangular with distinct length and width or a pen having cylindrical shape and blue color. I can pick up this pen and write in a notebook which means these objects are interacting with each other. Now if you want to apply this idea to your computer code, then what should you end up with? Of course an object which can interact with other objects, that's how the concept of object oriented programming is built. The term object-oriented programming OOP, was coined by Alan Kay around 1966. The language called Simula was the first programming language with the features of object-oriented programming. It was developed in 1967 for making simulation programs in which the most important information was called objects. Applications and Languages Supporting OOP Today, its application is in almost every field such as real-time systems, artificial intelligence and expert systems, client-server systems, object-oriented databases and many more. The most common programming languages supporting OOP features are Java, C++, Python, Ruby, PHP, TypeScript. What is object-oriented programming? Object-oriented programming is all about creating objects. An object is a group of interrelated variables and functions. These variables are often referred to as properties and functions are referred to as the behavior of the object. These objects provide a better and clear structure for the program. For example, a car can be an object with its properties slash variables as its color, its model, its price, its brand, etc and its behavior slash function would be acceleration, slowing down, gear change. What is class? A class is a blueprint or a template for creating objects. Thus, an object is a specific instance of a class. It contains real values instead of variables. For example, we can consider a car as a class that has properties slash variables like steering wheels, seats, brakes, etc and its behavior slash function is mobility. But we can say red color Honda City having a registration number 2358 is an object that belongs to the class car. Features of OOP The properties that make OOP powerful and special among other programming paradigm are abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. Abstraction Let's take a look at the formal definition of abstraction. Abstraction is the act of removing elements of specificity to emphasize commonality. But what does it mean? Let's take an example of a car. It has a number of attributes such as registration number, engine type, the number of miles it traveled, the age of the car or even the color of the car or the accessories. Now, suppose you lost your car and are describing it to your friend or police. You'd not be telling them the injured type of the number of miles it traveled because it won't help them locate the car. Or suppose your car has developed some problem and you visit a mechanic and want to describe the car. What will you describe? Here, you won't tell about the color or the registration number of a car. You'll describe the engine type and number of miles it traveled. So, depending on the scenario, we describe the same object differently. This is exactly what abstraction means. Abstraction is the foremost feature of OOP. It is a concept that shows only essential attributes and hides unnecessary information from the users. It helps in reducing programming complexity and efforts from the user point of view. Encapsulation Formal definition of encapsulation is reducing dependencies between objects by hiding the internal representation of an object behind specific methods. Again, what does this mean in simple terms? Let's take an example of the same object, 
a car. When you insert a key and start a car, what happens? Obviously, it gets ready to move. But a series of processes come into picture between pressing the start button and the car getting started. And these processes are hidden from the driver of a car. Even if someone doesn't know about these processes, they can start and drive a car. This helps the engineers of a car to make any changes in the mechanism running inside the car so that the driver can still use the car even after the changes are made. This means the internals of a car are encapsulated and hidden from the driver. This is exactly what encapsulation means. Encapsulation is a mechanism of bundling data with the methods that operate on that data. Encapsulation is used to hide the values or state of a structured data object inside a class, preventing unauthorized parties direct access to them. Inheritance The formal definition of inheritance is where a class reuses the implementation of another class or specifies a new implementation. Let's understand this by an example. Suppose you are explaining a concept of a vehicle to a baby. You say that a car is a type of a vehicle which runs on a road and uses fuel. And now when you describe other vehicles such as a bus, a truck or a bike, you don't have to say that again and again that a bus or a truck runs on a road and uses fuel. You will simply tell these are vehicles. Here, vehicle is a broad category and car, bus, truck inherits the attributes of a vehicle and also have their own unique attributes. This is exactly what inheritance in OOP means. Inheritance is the procedure in which one class inherits the attributes and methods of another class. The class whose properties and methods are inherited are known as the parent class and the class that inherits the properties and methods is known as the child or derived class. Polymorphism One can define polymorphism as when an interface is applicable to a number of different types. This interface can be a function accepting different types of parameters or performing different tasks. But what does this actually mean? To make it easier to understand, let's again consider an example of vehicles. We have different types of vehicles such as bikes, cars, buses or trucks. Yet, the process of starting an engine is the same for each. So, it means that there is a common operation that works efficiently irrespective of the type. This is exactly what we mean by a function accepting different types of parameters but still performing the same task. Similarly, in computers, polymorphism is a way of allowing similar operations to be grouped together under the same name. So, these are the four basic and important features of OOP.